Bonjour, welcome to Miss Lucy's Classic Cajun Culture and Cooking. I'm your host, Miss Lucy, and today I'm at Thornhill Farms in Wesner, Louisiana, then off to Allen Canary, where I will be showing you where the sweet potato gets from this to this, and then to your table. So you stay with us, Shaq. We'll be right back. The Louisiana Seafood Board is proud to sponsor Miss Lucy's Cooking Series. Louisiana cooking is known around the world, and Louisiana's main ingredient, seafood. We put the same thing into our music that we put into our gumbo, everything. A Louisiana tour guide is available at www.louisianatravel.com. Louisiana crawfish, an appetizing natural resource. Years ago, I began collecting recipes. Some were my own, others were my mama's and grandma's. Stored away and almost forgotten. Imagine my delight recently at finding this treasure from my past. How precious. Now, I share these recipes and memories with my children and granddaughter. Just another part of my heritage and Miss Lucy's classic Cajun culture and cooking. Welcome to my kitchen, mes amis. Of course, today I'll be cooking some wonderful Louisiana sweet potatoes, or yams as some people call them. But first, I want to show you the very interesting visit I had at Thornhill Farms where we dug potatoes and then on to the cannery in Hesmer, Louisiana. Digging sweet potatoes is a whole lot easier now than it used to be. The weeds are the only things that are handpicked. Seems like a dirty job to me. Next, they are crated up to be brought to the trucks where they will be dumped in the 18 wheelers and driven to the cannery. Tons and tons of sweet potatoes and I'm buried neck deep among them. They are conveyed to a bath area. Then the sized, clean potatoes are washed again, then sliced according to the desired cut. These elevators take the product to be put into cans. Then, filled with sugar water. The cans are sealed. Then the canned sweet potatoes are steamed cooked. Then they are carried to be cooled in water vats. The labels are put on and the cans inspected carefully. This is Sweet Potato Midway. And they are loaded for shipment to the grocery. We always had pork, 
at home when I was growing up? Of course, that's because we raised our own hogs and we butchered our own hogs. And one of Mama's favorite recipes was the stuffed pork chops. And today, I'm going to share that with you. So she always made her stuffing, as I'm going to show you how, and then she stuffed the chops after the stuffing cooled. So I'm going to start sauteing my onions in this melted butter. Now you can use butter or you can use margarine. It doesn't matter. Just one's just as tasty as the other. Now I'm going to add our onions. Start them sauteing. Again, you don't want to overcook your stuff. Like add my bell pepper. All your uh, vegetables, you do not want to overcook them because they will cook inside the chops and it will enhance the, the flavor of the meat because the pork will just absorb that wonderful flavor of the stuffing. Okay, I'm going to add some garlic and never wants to come out of here. I don't blame it. Okay, I'm going to saute that very lightly. Mmm, pretty. Smells good too. You never go wrong using this. Yes, Mama always did her pork chops because I think that was her favorite meat and we always had pork at home and that always went well with the sweet potatoes that she fixed and that was another one of her favorite dishes with sweet potatoes. Now, Mama was a real good cook and she passed that on to me. Of course, all these wonderful recipes, I found them in my file when I was looking through and it just, it just made me feel so good. Okay, mmm, this smells good too. Okay, I'm going to let that saute a little bit here, and I'll show you how to make squeezed bread. The reason it's called squeezed bread, because you soak it in milk, then you squeeze it. Squeeze all the milk out of it. You know, it just, it'll kind of make that stuffing just stick together. Let me get some more here. I'll probably need a, about three slices. Okay, squeeze bread. I kind of like bread and milk myself. Now, some people don't think I'm sane eating bread and milk sometimes with sugar on top, but I've, I've learned how to make me a meal with that. Okay, this is my bread into my stuffing mix. Okay. On top of this, I'm going to season it with a little dab of salt and a little pepper. So now, good. then I'll mix all this together and let it just cook and mmm, it'll just hold on together real good and then it'll be easy to stuff into your chops. But of course, I'm going to have to cool this down before, and I've already got some cool ones prepared, so I'll show you how to do that, okay? Now, while this cooks, and just a little bit more, I'm going to go over and show you how I prep my pork chops. Now, okay, we'll just let that simmer a little bit here. All righty, let that cook. So... Here I have my gorgeous pork chops, which by the way, I like to kind of have about an inch and a quarter thick, because that gives you a lot of room to stuff. Okay, and you take your little knife and you make a pocket inside your chop here. Okay, that's where you're gonna add your stuffing to. Now before you add your stuffing, you season both sides of your chops. Salt, pepper, oops. Should have used my fingers. Do much better with my hands. <laughs> Rub that in real good. Of course, you put your hot sauce. A little dabble do you, like they say. Mmm. Rub it in. Then you take your stuffing, which of course I have, you know, cooled. That's just for handling purposes, really. And you just push it in with your fingers because you want to add as much stuffing to this as you can. See? Just. There you go. Just kind of like stuffing up. I, I guess a sausage. <laughs> Do your pockets real pretty. Now, see how it just 
bulks up here so you've got enough stuffing there and you lay them in your pan because I'm going to bake these. Okay, I'm going to do another one just to show you. Let me see, let me put a little salt and pepper on this one. Okay. Now we want these to taste as good as they can be. Okay. Yeah. Mm, I've eaten a lot of these in my, in my day because Mama just loved them. And, of course, when you have access to the pork, you really, and it always went so well with the sweet potatoes that she cooked. Okay. Yeah. Stuff it in real good. Seems like the more stuffing you have, the better the pork chops taste. Okay. Stuff it in. Yeah. You see this? This is so quick and easy. Okay. No problem. It's just very simple, too. Just any homemaker can do this. Okay. And then you lay them in your platter or your baking dish, rather. Lay it in the baking dish. Okay. Then I'm going to take these and I'm going to put them in the oven at 350 degrees and I'm going to bake them because you really, you can't brawl these because the pork won't be fully cooked and you want to make sure that your pork is well done when you take it out. Now, halfway through the hour that you're baking them, if you want to flip them over and brown them on both sides, that's fine. Just make sure that your pork's well done. But I usually don't cover mine. I'll let them bake in the oven without covering them. All right, and while these are baking for about an hour now, I'm going to fix that sweet potato dish that will go very well with this pork. And now for a very special sweet potato dish that I used to prepare when I was in high school. Of course, I'm going to show you how I fix the dish before I show you how to do the bourbon sweet potatoes. Sounds good, doesn't it? Yeah. You have to kind of do this because it helps the richness of the dish. Okay. It also keeps it from sticking to the bottom, which I don't think it's going to stick to the bottom because I'll show you what I'll be doing to prevent it from sticking. Okay. Now, got that well coated. You want to line that bottom of that pan real good. Okay. Of course, I have boiled and peeled, or you can even bake and peel your sweet potatoes because you have to have them like or can. You know, you can use the canned sweet potatoes. Then you take your, your chunks that you have and you just cut them up <clears throat> real, real. They don't have to be that small, but it helps. I'm going to kind of put this in the bottom of the pan here. It helps so you don't have to use as much of this other bourbon ingredient, and then you have more to drink that way. So if you don't use it all, you know. Let me just put that in here. See, these are pretty much big, so I'm going to cut this down. Okay. Now, because you just want this to, oh, this is so good. You just want it to kind of uh, absorb the flavor of the bourbon. It's just really going to make that sweet potato. Of course, sweet potatoes taste good cooked anyway. I love them. I just eat them just bo uh, boiled or baked. And it's just really, really good. Those Louisiana yams, and some people call them yams. Some people call them sweet potatoes. Actually, I always call them sweet potatoes. I don't think there's much of a difference. There's, uh, I, you know, it's just whatever the breed is. So, and they were brought from another country. I realize that, but we have really come a long way in the production of sweet potatoes, and gotten some really good breeds. So this is really special. All right. And these are grown not too far from my house, so I really appreciate them. All right. Now we've got that all done. And now for my very special ingredient. Think I got enough? <laughs> I'm hoping that I've got too much so I can kind of take part of this. Okay. So you want to have enough of, oh, I guess I'll have to use it all, huh? You, <laughs> yep. I guess I, I just want 
be able to fix my little toddy today. But you want to have enough to kind of almost coat all the sweet potatoes. Okay, let me get this. this is some light brown sugar, which I like to use the light brown. It just, and just really, it's got a milder flavor. Now, I use my hands to do this. You can do whatever, because you want to coat the top of it real well and scatter it out real, real good. And this brown sugar will give it all the flavor of a baked sweet potato casserole, but yet it'll be a little different because your bourbon will give it that extra zap <laughs> that you need. Instead of vanilla, vanilla flavor, you will use the bourbon flavor, okay? I, I like to use a lot of this because it thickens the bourbon as it cooks. You're going to kind of cook this in the oven, and actually your alcohol cooks out of it, so don't be afraid. The children can eat this. It's not just an adult dish. Okay. This is going to be real good. Mm -hmm. I guess I'll use it all. I like this. They're very sweet, but the, the brown sugar doesn't hurt. Okay. Now, to top this, I'm going to dot, dot the... Um, top of the sweet potatoes with butter. Okay, yes. This will be real, real good. Mmm. Go with our pork chop soup. Mm. Special, very special. Okay, now that's enough butter. You don't want to put too much in there because you already have some on the bottom. Now I'm going to take this to the oven and bake it. While our sweet potatoes are baking in the oven at 325 for about 30 minutes, I'm going to fix a very special dessert, which is my easy yam cookies. And now to make our easy yam cookies. Of course, now it's so easy to just to go to the grocery store and buy the mix. And of course, you get you know some cookies that are already coming in the uh, the batter's already mixed in a roll, and you can just chop them up. And I do that occasionally. But since Lucy's coming over today, I thought I'd treat her with something special. So I'm going to blend this all together. Yes, I've added butter because you really need to use butter when you're baking cookies, especially. Add some sugar. Woo! <laughs> messy cook. All good cooks are messy. Get my powder for today. Okay, that's mixed real well. I'm gonna add some soda, baking soda to this. All right. And a little salt. All right. Mix that up real well. Now, to this, I'm going to have to add some eggs, which I'm going to beat up with Mr. Edgar. We have named Edgar. Okay. Edgar does such a good job. Hmm. I have to solve that. Oh, well. All good cooks are messy cooks. Now, get this out of the way. I'm going to add my eggs to this. Beat that up real well. Okay. To this, I'm going to add my vanilla flavor. Okay. That's mixing up real well. Okay. Now, the wonderful ingredient which I'm going to add is the Louisiana sweet potato. Okay. You just mix all this together, just throw it all together, and it's just great. See, it's mixing all great. It's blended in very well. Make sure your dough is very well blended with the sweet potatoes. Okay. Now, okay. Let's whip that up real well, because you want to whip that up real good before you add your flour to this. Okay. Now, you slow your mixer down, because you're going to get another pottering if you don't. Well, matter of fact, that looks better. Very good. Okay. What I'll do, I'll just add a little 
bit of flour. You used to, uh, you know, I, I kind of gauge it by the eye because you have to just make it to consistency to where you can drop them. These are drop cookies. So, all right. I can smell the sweet potatoes, it is so good. I can't wait to bake them. I bet Lucy's gonna really enjoy them, okay? Now, I'm gonna add some more flour because it's just not stiff enough yet, okay? All right, good. Woo. <laughs> okay, let me just kind of whip that up from the side now. Okay. Mm. I seldom bake cookies anymore, but since I don't have any more children, but I used to a whole lot because it was so easy to make. Let me see if this, you want a, a well, it's not quite, you just have to add just a little bit more flour because you want it to just be the right, you don't want too much flour because you, <laughs> your cookies are going to be tough. <laughs> Woo what I say, all good cooks are messy cooks. Yeah, this is perfect. Very good. Okay. All right, good, good, good. Yeah, now, if Lucy'd be here, she would be licking the spatula. <laughs> yeah, she said she's my licking machine. All right, I don't want this to fall out on the cabinet. I've already made enough mess. Okay. Oh, let me put that here, okay? Get off. Woo! Trying to get out, aren't you? All right. Now, I'm going to take this pan. Of course, I've already put some on the platter, but what I'm going to do, I'm going to drop these, because like I said, these would drop cookies. And just drop them on the pan, like this. Oops, that one's a little bit large. Supposed to have them a little bit more uniform. Mine never come out the right way. But they taste good. That's the important thing. Cajun usually don't worry about how their food looks, it's how it tastes. So I'm going to put these here, okay. There you see how pretty this color of the dough is? It's just beautiful. So very good. And they're going to spray it, but these will be more like, uh, like Melissa said, a coconut macaroon type cookie. So, all right, these are your cookies that I have just made here. But now your dough usually is better if you refrigerate it a little bit. It might get a little, uh, more of the spreading consistency. These, see how gorgeous and golden they are? I'm going to take these to the oven and bake them now. At 325, for about 10, 15 minutes until they're golden brown. Okay, now we've got our entire meal put together. Let's see what it all looks like. Now we have our wonderful meal put together, which of course is our stuffed pork chops, which are as delicious as they look, and our side dish of bourbon sweet potatoes. Of course, this is as tasty as it sounds. So I'm going to serve a wilted salad with this. This is some heated oil and vinegar, and you pour this over, ooh, pour this over some lettuce, and I have chopped after I boil some eggs and with some bacon on top. This is just great. Mama always fixed these. And last but not least, we have our wonderful yam cookies. These are only a few of the dishes that can be prepared with Louisiana products. Can't get any sweeter than this. Wonderful Louisiana sweet potatoes. Now I'm going to read you one of my fan letters. Dear Miss Lucy, my daughter Julia is seven and one of your biggest fans. She loves to cook and looks for your show on TV in New Orleans. We have made cooking a big part of our family time that is spent together, just as your show on your program. We have lots of fun and make many memories in the kitchen. 
Julie and I also love your motto of good cook is a messy cook. Many thanks for your instructions and encouragement in the kitchen. We look forward to many episodes of wonderful recipes. Guy and Julia Ranzino from New Orleans. Thank you for this wonderful letter and thank you for joining me today. See you again soon, Shaq. V, you didn't do that. <laughs> well, we're going to look at fun song of that Noah Langer. Look, 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 look. We can't find you. We got to do it again. I'm going to fall. The Louisiana Seafood Board is proud to sponsor Miss Lucy's Cooking Series. Louisiana cooking is known around the world, and Louisiana's main ingredient, seafood. We put the same thing into our music that we put into our gumbo, everything. A Louisiana tour guide is available at www.louisianatravel.com. Louisiana crawfish, an appetizing natural resource.